Uh, let's take a break on the rise news and it's time for the press preview, a fresh look at what's on the front pages of the papers. And as usual, we start with our sister publication, uh, the Stay newspaper. Uh, on the front page of the Stay, Tinubu vows to make corruption unattractive, says unity of country, not negotiable. It has some writers. There can only be one president at a time. I cannot commit to expenditures. Uh, pledges to fulfill all political promises. There is in the picture, uh, you see him inaugurating an ultra modern magistrate's court complex in Rivers, where he spent two days uh, with the governor there, yes, on weekend. Uh, in alliance with Gibrin, at Mabio gets momentum over 65 senators sign support. Oshomala waits in the wings, relies on the constitution. Carlos still in the race, insists South East deserves it. And above that, on White Tribe, May 29, Defense Headquarters warns against plot to scuttle, hand over a program. And then just above the uh, mast of this day, Sudan, about 200 Nigerians stranded on road to Egypt. Then at the top mast, on Ayeko, it's senseless to swear in 2023 winners of polls with pending court cases. It says uh, he calls for review of Nigeria's electoral system. Well, let's look at the front page of the punch. It's leading with the May 29 handover as the military wants again sabotage. Uh, Goan counsels petitioners and, of course, threats to new president's inauguration will be promptly dealt with, says Defense Headquarters. Kiamo knocks on Ayeko for saying Tinubu shouldn't be sworn in before tribunal verdict. The leading photograph of the punch uh, this morning is that of uh, the rescued Chiba girls uh, with, of course, uh, men of the Nigerian army there. Uh, troops killed 14 insurgents, rescued the two girls. Above the nameplate for the punch this morning, federal roads, federal government pay states 859.7 billion naira in eight years. Uh, government agencies, military or electricity firms, says Senate. Reps raised Buhari's extra budgetary spending to 23.7 trillion naira and 70% Southwest private school teachers unqualified. That is troubling. Yeah, right. I was going to read that. Tribune also has that here. Yeah, what you're talking about, Tribune mm -hmm. also has it. Let, let's look at the Tribune newspaper uh, on its front, very busy front page. It says, uh, our ordeal returnees from Sudan recount. Uh, four aircraft conveying about 400 returnees being expected. FG mobilized to Nigerian Airlines, Sudanese local airline. No Nigerian wishing to return home will be left behind. This is from the Humanitarian Affairs uh, Minister. Blames third party vendors for glitches. And then uh, APC crisis. Lukman writes Adamu NWC apologizes for embarrassing party leadership. Confirms withdrawal of suit against national chairman and the secretary, Iola Omishore. No cause for concern over May 29 inauguration. This is coming from the fence headquarters. Um, and just to the right on the top mast, reps want that voters removed from INEC register. Mm. Well, the Daily Sun is also leading with that story of the returnees uh, recounting their ordeal in Sudan and Egypt. Uh, we thought we would die, they say, as federal government promises 100,000 naira each to evacuees. Another bold story on the front page of Daily Sun this morning, Nigeria's unity non-negotiable, says President-elect Bola Tinubu, vows to make corruption in judiciary unattractive on his second day visit to River State. Troops kill 30 terrorists, apprehend 48 in North Central, North West. And that's the front page of the Daily Sun. Let's look at the Guardian. The Guardian newspaper uh, leads with, um, it says, uh, study route to Japa. Well, Japa simply means uh, leaving Nigeria and going abroad. Over $4 billion spent on overseas education in eight years amid poor funding, neglect of public schools. And then just below that picture, apologize, compensate for colonization. Aborigines tell King Charles III, whose coronation comes up uh, in a bit. Mm -hmm. And Tinubu promises, uh, well, fresh hurdles for rare cargo, Asako, Nako, raised charges by 100%. 
Let's take a look at the international papers. According to the I, Shell forcibly installed prepayment meters in some 4,145 homes during 2022. All right, The Guardian, uh, UK and US in challenge uh, to tech firms over growing power of AI. I think the founder was talking about it this morning on air. Mm. All right, uh, let's bring in Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, glad to have you this Friday. Good morning to you, Emmanuel. I hope Emmanuel can hear us. Good, can good hear morning, you. Emmanuel. Good morning. Okay, good. Now, this day, let's look at what it is saying. Tinubu seems to be making the right statements. Uh, uh, Tinubu vows to make corruption unattractive and says unity of country not negotiable. Uh, there can only be one president at a time. I don't yet have the power uh, to commit to expenditures. He was telling Wiki in reverse that he pledges to fulfill all political promises. And then there's this alliance with Jibreen. Uh, Babio gets momentum. Over 65 senators sign in support of him. And then the talk of uh, the defense headquarters concerning May 29, warning against plot to scuttle hand over program. Uh, which of these uh, topics do you want to discuss, Imano, or review? Preview. Yeah, yes, the the lead story, which uh, almost is coming across as uh, like like an uh, you know an exclusive, uh, very interesting story. That Tinubu speaking on corruption. Uh, but there are people who look at this story and begin to also question. You know, it brings back all the question about his own records too as a person, uh, because a lot of especially his traducers see him more or less like a poster child uh, for corruption itself. Whether it is his records in of, uh, in office or uh, the, the dealings he's had around uh, his life. Uh, so, uh, but he is giving a blueprint of how he's going to fight corruption, and he's saying this against the backdrop of. Uh, uh, the you know the judiciary saying that uh, judges are only corrupt because they don't have their uh, you know the right atmosphere. That if they live in squalor, they are going to give squalid kind of um, uh, 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 rulings. So that this some idea, he thinks that if you just make the life of people better, if you uh, if, if, you know if they have got some money with them and their life is better, they will, they will, they, will, they won't be corrupt. Uh, there are people that will argue that with him and say corruption uh, is not the absence of maybe uh, you know the absence of uh, some wealth or uh, the good life uh, that is making people corrupt and that people some people just choose to be corrupt. And you see that in some of the mind-boggling cases of corruption, people that don't really necessarily even need the money, uh, going, going away with 80 billion, 90 billion, 200 billion, running into even some, so sometimes uh, it's beyond just making the lives of people better. Uh, corruption is beyond that, and uh, the, the president-elect should have, you know, should uh, should look at this critically again because uh, he just glibly said that look, if you live, if you if you make, you know, if you make uh, corruption unattractive by making people lives better, uh, they will run away from it. But maybe not necessarily so. Uh, there are rich people who steal money and who are corrupt. Not necessarily because their lives are any better. And then for the judges, uh, some judges don't really need the monies that uh, you know we hear they collect before they give the kind of uh, judgment. They don't really need it. Uh, so. Uh, at one time in this country, someone was saying that maybe that, uh, some people have a, a mental crisis or some kind of mental issues around the issue of uh, corruption. So it goes beyond that. But uh, again, maybe this is not the president giving his dissertation on corruption. Maybe he's just speaking to the occasion and saying that, look, uh, if he makes the life of judges better, uh, probably he can deal with the issue of corruption. But it's good. It, of course, he should know that that goes beyond that. It is not about making the lives of people better. That is very important, too. Um, there are people who have stolen money because they don't have anything to do again. But sometimes there are very rich people. Very, the AFCC will give you stories of people that shockingly, you know, uh, go to take away people's money even when they don't need it. So uh, it's, it's an ongoing argument. And uh, a lot of people have argued that uh, corruption is just endemic. It's, it's something that is almost habitual. It's something that is, you know, entrenched in some people's DNA. Uh, the, the president will have to deal with all of that as he, as he tries to make Nigeria corruption free. Indeed. Well, staying with uh, this day and uh, some other papers that actually report on the same story, uh, Emmanuel Bello, about the nameplate this morning is uh, a comment made by uh, Onayekon, the prelate, 
Uh, it says it's senseless to swear in 2023 winners of polls with pending court cases. I think the Nigerian Tribune also has that story and a couple of other national dailies. Uh, sense or no sense? I mean, we've seen this happen just recently in Kenya where everybody applauded the country's judiciary. Uh, the election was contested three days after argument. We did see a, dis a decision from the, the uh, apex courts of the country in Kenya. It can be done. So does it make sense what the prelate is saying here? Yeah, a lot of sense. And people have said this thing. It's our, it's Sam Amadi the other day, they, my, my colleague here, who was saying the other day that, look, you know, winning elections uh, at the poll does not really automatically uh, you know, translate into the fact that you're either president or governor, as the case may be. And if you have cases, it's a 50-50 thing. Uh, I just, it's, just, it's just like you arguing with somebody over a property, over a house, and then it's already their building, and even changing curtains and all that. And you're like, look, we're still, this is still under litigation, but you're already occupying spaces and doing things. That's the sort of thing that you see around the Tinubu thing. You know, he's been treated like a president. Uh, Wiki gave him one day holiday uh, in, in Potako. So it looks, you know, he's already getting some kind of presidential treatment. He, he's, he lives in the defense house now and all of that. So he gets all that treatment. It's not as if, and um, it's troublesome because when you see that it's troubling too, uh, when you see all of that and you begin to wonder, what about the case on ground? Uh, has it been foreclosed? So uh, on, on Icon, is, is a privilege is, is right to, say, to have said that, look, uh, why not wait until all these cases are over? Because you probably have a situation where someone has been sworn in, and it's happened in this country before, people, someone was already getting warmed up. He's happy that his governor or his president, uh, well, it has not happened at the presidential level. And and suddenly the courts uh, cut it, cut, you know, cut, uh, cut the party short, and um, uh, the, everyone is back to square square one again. And it's, it's always very expensive because you have to go back to the whole electioneering uh, program. Too. So uh, yes, if we're going to have litigation, we might as well just try to bring them to some kind of decisive, conclusive uh, end, uh, so that we know we're done with all of that. Uh, the other thing is also on the part of the incoming uh, individual who is actually bogged down by the issues of courts and all that. They humans. Uh, the, the president let, uh, can't say that he's not conscious of the fact that uh, he's sitting you know, in between, uh, the, 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 there are these cases, and that any time, any day uh, some judgment could come. Unless again if in the, in, you know, if, uh, in, the in, in the true Nigeria tradition, all that has been done already, and that some, there are people who tell you that look, it's, there's nothing really new that will come out of these courts, and that they have no faith in the tribunals and all of that. There are people who say that. But the, way, the level of scrutiny, and the level of evidence, and the level of even the kind of uh, thing that we're doing here in the media, which is beaming our searchlight on the judiciary, the NGOs doing the whole of that. This is a different day altogether. So for someone to have the kind of confidence uh, that Tinubu is having, well, some people will say that you, he better check it because uh, some, not many people are sure that uh, things are going to be uh, the way they used to be again. Let's look at Tribune. Uh, Tribune on his front page talks about the Sudan crisis, the evacuees. Uh, some of them are back and some are yet to come back today. Four aircraft conveying about 400 returnees being expected, you know, to bring them uh, back in. That's one issue. Then you have two other issues. APC crisis. Lukeman writes, Adamu, and the NWC, of which is a member, apologizes for the embarrassment. And he has, he has promised to uh, confirm withdrawing. Actually, he has withdrawn the suit against the national chairman. And the secretary. Now, on the top mast of tri Tribune, 70% of private school teachers in Southwest unqualified to teach. This is coming from TRC here. Yes, Tribune is, Tribune is very busy today with very uh, a good story day. It's a Friday, and so on. I think Tribune was looking at the human angle aspect of the Sudan crisis, which is good. You know, you need to, they, they, they are just not, these are students, not just numbers, but individuals, human beings, and they are talking, they are, you know, they are narrating the ordeal. It's the sort of story you'll find as you head into the weekend, the human angle, the human cost, and the, you know, the trepidation around uh, those, those kids must have gone through, and, um, and all the other things, the other stories. So it makes for interesting reading to know. The other day there was a clip of uh, school kids uh, crying in the desert then they're in the middle of nowhere. I think it's the sort of stories that people would like to, you know, key into uh, individual, uh, real-life uh, uh, crisis. So it makes for interesting reading, especially as we head into the, uh, more into the weekends uh, to flesh up uh, those stories. 
Well, thank you so much, Manuel Bello, for your analysis. We do appreciate it. And that's the press review. Let's hear your views on all the burning issues. Follow us on Twitter at Arise TV.